continue exercise 9.2 first five question were already done in the last session now let's see question number six here you are given an arithmetic progression with summation equals to 116 so AP is this 25 22 19 and so on so you can write a what is a 25 what is D this minus this which is minus 3 first term and common difference and you are given SN also read the question the sum of certain number of terms of an AP is 116 and what is the question question is to find N Right. And once you know n, you can get the nth term, that is a n. We want to answer these two questions. Fine. Without knowing small n, you cannot answer a n because formula for a n, you know. So I'll use this. What is s n? We know n by two into two a plus n minus one into d equals to 116. I'll take 2 on the other side, n into 2a, so this will be 50, plus d is minus 3. So here I'll write, uh, this is plus 3 and minus 3n, equals to, here, if I multiply with this 2, this is 232. So this is uh, 53n minus 3n squared equals to 232 so question is just factorization here take on the other side so 3n square minus 53n plus 232 now how do we factorize find two numbers whose sum or the difference should be 53 and product should be here uh, 232 right so uh, you can just do little rough work and probably factors will be this the multiple of 3 which is here 24 n and here uh, it, it would be 29 n plus 232 equals to 0 this is just simple factorization you can do by trial and error now take 3 common, take 29 common here. So we'll have here uh, 3n outside, so it will be n minus 8 minus 29 outside, so it will be n minus 8 again. So 3n minus 29 into n minus 8 equals to 0. So either n is equal to 8 or n equals to 29 by 3. Now n never be fractional, you know, number of terms. So this is not the required value. This is the required value. Required value. Now what we do? We just put in the formula of an. You are asked for which term here? Read the question. You are asked for last term. Last term means an last term equals to a n which is equals to a plus n minus 1 into d so what we'll get from this you know a now what is a 25 plus what is this this is just n minus 1 7 minus 1 into minus 3 so you will get therefore finally 4 so last term will be for nth term for which summation will be you know how much 116 seventh question kth term a k you are given which is 5k plus 1 kth term you are given for an arithmetic progression what you want you want the sum of the n terms that is you need s n this is a question so you need a and d so from this i'll write arithmetic progression so immediately you'll get a and d put k equals to one here so first term will be six so ap will be six put two here 10 plus 1 11 put three here 15 plus 1 which will be here 16 and so on 
So what is first term 6? What is common difference? What is D here? Common difference 11 minus 6 which is 5. Okay. Once you know uh, these two things, uh, you can find SN. So write the formula for SN which is N by 2, 2A plus N minus 1 into D. What is uh, this N as it is here because you want the sum of the N terms. 2 into A, so 6. N as it is, N minus 1, D is how much? 5. So this is uh, here nothing but N by 2, 5N, 5 plus, you know, 12. So finally, uh, here you will get required summation that is uh, 12 and minus 7, that is minus 5, sorry, so plus 7. So Sn is this, n by 2, 5n plus 7, 12 minus 5. The eighth question. For an arithmetic progression, Sn you are given P into N plus Qn square. Now write the formula for Sn. We know N by 2, 2A plus N minus 1 into D equals to Pn plus Qn square. Okay, now I'll just uh, open the bracket here. If I open the bracket, this 2, 2 will get cancelled. This is a into n plus uh, here we have uh, n square minus n into d by 2 equals to pn plus qn square. Now what I'll do, I'll express this left hand side expression in this form constant into n plus some another constant into n square. I'll set in that form. So here, uh, if you open this, this is uh, n square into d by 2 minus n into d by 2 equals to p into n plus qn square. Now just taking n common from this 2, so a minus d by 2 into n plus here uh, d by 2 into n square equals to pn plus qn square. Fine. Now we just compare the coefficients on both the sides. Comparison on coefficients. What is the coefficient of n here? p. Coefficient of n is this much. What is the coefficient of n square q? So comparing this one with this. So therefore we will get the q equals to d by 2. But you want common difference remember. So what is d? It is 2q. Fine. What I did? I just compared the coefficient. What is the coefficient of n square here? d by 2. We are interested in d. So I have just compared with this. And here q. So d by 2 must be q and therefore d equals to 2q. That's what uh, the required common difference here 2q. Okay. Next question. Question number now ninth. Ninth question. That's good example. The ninth question. What is given for two APs? Summation of uh, two APs here are given in this ratio. Find their 18th term ratio that's given. So for two APs, for two arithmetic progressions, SN and let's call another progression as dash equals to, we are given this 5N plus 4 upon 9N plus 6. Fine. For two arithmetic progressions, you are given what is given to us? Ratio of sum of the n terms. One I call the Sn, the other one I call the S dash. Okay, now write the formula for Sn for n terms. n by 2, we know 2a plus n minus 1 into d. 
here. Now this is another progression. So first term and common difference need not be same. Number of terms is n remember. So n remains same. Here we write the a dash plus n minus 1 into d dash. Right? I hope you must have realized why we have chosen in this way. There are two arithmetic progressions. So for both the progressions, common difference and first term need not be same. So here a and a dash, here d and d dash equals to we have this 5n plus 4 upon 9n plus 6. So this will get cancelled. Number of terms. So we are getting finally this 2a plus n minus 1 into d equals to 5n plus 4 here upon 2a dash plus n minus 1 into d dash upon we have 9n plus 6 call this as 1 okay now here see what is asked in the question if we concentrate there we have simplified given information now we want to find this to find what you want to find ratio of 18th term that is 18 and the other one is a dash 18 so what you need you need uh, here a plus you know here uh, 17d and here a dash plus 17d we need this this is what you want this is a question fine now here you just see this required expression and that given expression you need here 17 here you have 17 d fine and here a but here you have 2a that means i must have here i must have here how much 34 if i choose n minus 1 equals to 34 then what happens 2a plus 34 d take two common so a plus 17 d i repeat we need here a plus 17 d Fine. So if I take this one as just 17, then what happens if I take 2 common, it becomes 17 by 2. You don't want 17 by 2. I want 17. Here I have twice a, but I have just a. So what I need to do here, take n minus 1 is equal to double of 17, which is 34. If I take n minus 1 equals to 34, then 2a plus 34, take 2 common, so I'll get the a plus 17d. So based on this, just I'll write taking, this is your choice, remember, taking n minus 1 equals to 34, that is n equals to 35 in 1. Taking n minus 1 equals to 34 in 1. Right? If you are asked ratio of some other terms, then this n minus 1 might be different. So that depends upon the given question. Fine. So I'm just putting n equals to 35 in this question. So 2a plus n minus 1, which will be 34d upon, what about this? 2a dash plus 34d dash equals to, I'm taking n equals to how much? Here. Uh, 35 so 5 into 35 plus 4 9 into 35 plus 4 fine I hope this is clear to you what I'm doing I'm taking n equals to how much here 35 so this is 5 into 35 plus 4 upon 9 into 35 plus 6 so here take two common so we'll get the a plus 17 d that's what you wanted take two common cancel with that a dash plus 17 d dash equals to what is this uh, this is nothing but here if you just simplify we'll get 179 here and this is 321 and uh, that's what uh, i suppose you are asked is it? What's the question? Just read the question. You'll realize. Find the ratio of this. So this is nothing but which term? As we've written, 18th term of these two progressions equals to 179 upon 321. This is a required ratio. Clear? It's a very important question. What is important one here? The important one is this portion. You need this. 
So on based on this, you have selected n minus 1 equals to 34. Right? If you are asked ratio of some another terms, then this n minus 1 might be different also. Why we have chosen double here? Because I have double here. That's why. So in the 10th question, this is also a nice question. You are given that what's given to us? The sum of the first p, p terms, that is sp, equals to sum of the first q terms. This is given in the data. Fine. What you want? There, you want sum of the first p q terms. So we want this sp plus q. This is the question. We keep this one in your mind. Let's write the meaning of this. What's the meaning of this? You know p by 2 into 2a plus p minus 1 into d. That's equals to this side q by 2 into 2a plus q minus 1 into d. For the same progression we are doing. So I've chosen a and d equal remember. Your sequence is same. We are not having two different sequences. Okay. Now we simplify, 2, 2 will get cancelled from both the sides. I will open the bracket here. So 2ap plus, let me write p into p minus 1 into d equals to 2aq plus q into q minus 1 into d. Now what I will do? I will take you can see 2a common and d common. So we will just rearrange. From this 2, I will take 2a common. So if I take 2a common and if I will take on the other side, this is p minus q. Fine. From this 2, I will take d common. So if I take d common, what we are having here? p square minus p. Take this side. So minus q square plus q equals to 0. I hope this is clear to you. What I did, just taking 2a common from this 2, taking, you know, d common from this 2. So p square minus p, here q square minus q, but if you take on the other side, minus q square plus q. Fine. Now here 2a into p minus q as it is, this 2 can be factorized here. p square minus q square, p plus q into p minus q. And from this 2 here, I'll take minus sign common. From this 2, I'll take minus common. So we have P minus Q equals to 0. Okay, now you can see that you can divide by P minus Q throughout. Dividing by P minus Q, which is not 0. So here I'm getting 2A plus D into, we are left with here p plus q and here you are left with minus 1 equals to 0. This is what we have derived from the given data, most simplified form. Now we go to what we want. So now what you want? You want s p plus q. Write the formula that is p plus q by 2 inside the bracket 2a plus we know the formula here p plus q minus 1 into d. Now what's that bracket? That's 0. You did it. You see this is exactly this bracket. Call this as 1. So p plus q by 2 this is just 0 by 1. And therefore we have 0 here. This is what uh, you wanted to find. So some of the S plus P plus Q terms is zero. Proved. Clear? We have just simplified. In every AP question, you just need to use the formula. I've used the formula for S P S Q and I've just simplified. And this is the most simplified form. Now further you cannot simplify. Then I've started with the required thing. You're asked for this. I wrote the formula. You know that bracket is just this zero. Fine. And therefore, sum of the P plus Q terms is 0 here. Question number 11. 
the eleventh question. Mm. First, P, Q, and R terms of an AP. So, for an arithmetic progression, small a, you can see that is nothing but the SP. Small b is nothing but the SQ. And small c is nothing but the SR. Some of the first P terms, Q terms, and R terms for an arithmetic progression are small a, b, c respectively. Now we just write the value for each of this. So what is the small a? That is p by 2. You know the formula. Here a is already used. So I'll use big A. Small, same symbol cannot be used. 2a plus p minus 1 into d. Fine. Same symbol cannot be used. Small a is already used in the data. So for first term I'll use a here. Right? Your first term, first term equals to what I've used, B A. Okay, 2A. Now go to small b. What is small b? Some of the Q terms. Q by 2, 2A plus Q minus 1 into D. What is small c? That is R by 2 into 2A plus R minus 1 into D. Fine. Now very simple, what you need to do? You want uh, to prove that this is equals to 0. So now I'll start with LHS expression. What is LHS expression? A by P into Q minus R plus B by Q into R minus P plus C by R into P minus Q. Now you can just observe from the given things. You take P down here. So what's the value of A by P here? That is half, half this expression, which is 2A plus P minus 1 into D into Q minus R as it is. We are doing nothing with that. Plus, now what's the value of uh, B by Q? Take Q down here. So B by Q. What's the value of B by Q? Half. What we'll get here? 2a plus q minus 1 into d into r minus p as it is right now. Plus c by r, this one. Take r down. So this is half. This is 2a plus r minus 1 into d into p minus q. Now what you can do? You take half common from all. Now you need to open all this bracket. This with this two. This with this two and this one with this two. Then you will see that you will find two a common. So inside the bracket you will get these into this into this. So just if you do this much you will get two a. This this this. This will be zero. You can just verify. And here you take d common. So P minus 1 into this, Q minus 1 into this, R minus 1 into this. If you take D common, I'm sure here also you will get 0. So 0 into 2A, 0 into D. So we'll get the 0, which is just right inside expression. And therefore proved. This is simple algebra, remember. Once you placing the value, you just open all the bracket, take 2a common, take d common, you will realize that all the terms will get cancelled internally, you will get the 0. There is nothing. Twelfth one, that's also an important example. Ratio of sum of m terms and n terms of an arithmetic progression is m square upon n square. This is like question number 9 only. So for an AP, for an arithmetic progression, uh, you are given SM upon SN equals to M square by N square. So let's just simplify. So this is M by 2. You know the formula. Now we did number of times. 2A plus M minus 1 into D upon. This is N by 2 for the same progression. So A and D remain same. In Ninth question you had a dash and a dash because there you had two different progressions. So that difference you should note here equals to m square upon n square. Fine. Now 2, 2 will get cancelled. 
one end will get cancelled with this one end will get cancelled with this so we are having this 2a plus m minus 1 into d upon 2a plus n minus 1 into d equals to m by n fine let's call this as just one equation number one now what you want you just concentrate there what you want you want the ratio of mth term and nth term okay so uh, here uh, we we find this let's try to be find or we prove in fact you are asked to prove here am and an let's write the formula for am what's the formula for am you know a plus uh, here m minus 1 into d and what's the formula for this a plus n minus 1 into d we want this this is a question fine as we did in that question okay so like that question you can do or you can think in fact see here I need just a plus m minus 1 fine so what you can do you need to select here instead of this double of this remember so see what I'll do what I'll do in place of this I have 2a here so I must have 2 times m minus 1 so uh, in 1 in 1 put m equals to not m I'll write m minus 1 let's try it like this instead of m minus 1 put twice m minus 1 and instead of this put twice n minus 1 in 1 right what happens once I place the values I'll get you see 2a as it is in place of m minus 1 I'm putting twice m minus 1 into d upon instead of this I'm putting twice 2 times n minus 1 into d now right hand side you have m and n so what's the value of m from this you take 1 on the other side so what will get 2m minus 2 if I take on the other side you can see that the m will be 2m minus 2 plus 1 so it is m minus 1 what is the value of n 2n minus 2 take 1 on the other side so 2n minus 1 now take 2 common take 2 common and it will get cancelled from the numerator and denominator so what will get a plus m minus 1 into d your a plus n minus 1 into d equals to 2m minus 1 upon 2n minus 1 what is this this is mth term what is this this is nth term equals to 2m minus 1 upon 2n minus 1 is proved is proved I'll just go to this part of C what is m minus 1 that is 2m minus 2 take 1 on the other side so it is 2m minus 2 plus 1 so 2m minus 1 so I place the value of m what's the value of n 2n minus 2 plus 1 so 2n minus n are placed here and then you know this 2 2 will get cancelled and so on why I have chosen this double that you know because I need just a here you have 2a so just take 2 common we have chosen this double like that question number 9 right in the ninth question you had the same procedure this is one way or alternatively also you can do what you can do I'll write just I'll suggest you if you don't like this you can do this or you start with this you just start with this simplify and get the value of d that's another way of doing this and then start with this am upon an write the formula that is a plus m minus 1 into d place the value of d which you obtain here then a plus this one 
into d plus the value of d you obtained here. So you will get this 2m minus 1 upon 2n minus 1. This is another way of doing the same question. Try this way also, you will see. Question number 13, which I leave it for you. Try yourselves, not a difficult question. I'll go to question number 14. Insert five numbers between here 8 and 26. So it becomes an arithmetic progression. We had such discussion in the theory portion. A you are given, B you are given. We want five numbers between these two. So this becomes an arithmetic progression. So this question about five arithmetic means. So n equals to how many arithmetic, how many numbers you are asked? Five numbers. Okay, this is eight, this is 26. So you just need to get the common difference. Once you get the common difference, you have A, so we'll get this. Now here you have the prepared formula for common difference, B minus A upon N plus one. So what we'll get from this? 26 minus how much? 26 minus 8 upon 6 so this would be just 18 by 6 so 3 so d is 3 here common difference so now this one if you remember a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 so therefore a1 is what first term plus common difference so 8 plus 3 which is 11 what is a2 you know here 11 plus 3 which is 14 fine what is a3 you know 14 plus 3 common difference this plus d so we'll get the 17 what is a4 we know 17 plus 3 which is 20 what is a5 that is 20 plus 3 which is 23 now next if you write 23 plus d obviously you'll get the 26 but you are asked for this five numbers required numbers required numbers right in the entire uh, theory this is the only important thing which is common difference question number 15 uh, you are given that arithmetic mean of a and b equals to a raised to n plus b raised to n upon a raised to n minus 1 plus b raised to n minus 1 this is given to you what is arithmetic mean between two numbers? You know, a plus b by 2, that we know, equals to you have this. What is asked in the question? Find the value of n, right? That's the question. The question is, get the value of n. What is the value of n? That's the question. Arithmetic mean of a and b is given by this a raised to n plus b raised to n upon a raised to n minus 1 plus b raised to n minus 1. What's, what's the formula for arithmetic mean? That is a plus b by 2. So we have this. Question is get the value of small n. Okay. Now by just observation you see you can answer what is n very easily. a raised to 1, b raised to 1. So n has to be 1. And here a raised to 0 because n is 1. So this is 1, b raised to 0 also 1. So just by observation, you can answer very easily that n has to be 1, right? That small n should be 1 only. Fine. Okay. Now we will prove it. So what we do? We just take the cross multiplication. We'll do just cross multiplication. So what I'll get on the left hand side? A plus B into a raised to n minus 1 plus b raised to n minus 1 equals to twice a raised to n plus twice b raised to n. What we did? We have just taken the cross multiplication. Let's open this. a raised to 1, a raised to n minus 1. That is a raised to n. a as it is, b raised to n minus 1. Here b as it is, a raised to n minus 1. b raised to n minus 1 and b raised to 1. That is just b raised to n equals to twice a raised to n plus twice b raised to n. I've just opened the bracket on the left hand side. Here a raised to 1, a raised to n minus 1. So this become a raised to n. b raised to 1, b raised to n minus 1. So this is b raised to n. 
1 a raised to n will get cancelled with this 1 b raised to n will get cancelled with this so we have here a into b raised to n minus 1 plus b into a raised to n minus 1 equals to a raised to n plus b raised to n one term will get cancelled you can see that very easily now here you have n minus 1 power and here you have n power. So we can take common n minus 1 power from this two. Here n minus 1 power n power. So from these two also you can take common. So I am just rewriting taking a raised to n on the other side. b raised to n as it is. I will take this one on the other side. So a into b raised to n minus 1. Right. You know why I did like this. Now. Uh, take a raised to n minus 1 common so this is b and here n minus 1 power you already taken common so this is a you take b raised to n minus 1 common so here you are left with b because one power that is just b minus a now this will get cancelled assuming that they are different we are getting this right and that you can write like this a by b the whole rest to n minus 1 equals to 1. Fine. And now here uh, you can see that this is 1 only when you have rest to 0. You know a by b rest to 0 is 1. Anything rest to 0 is 1. So therefore n minus 1 has to be 0. Then and then this is 1. And therefore small n equals to 1. Right? That's what you had observed in the beginning now we have derived this the small s has to be one question number 16 here between 1 and 31 so you are given this between here 1 and 31 these are the two given numbers m numbers have been inserted in such a way that this becomes arithmetic progression so we have m numbers so we have a1, a2, you know, up to am, right? These are the m numbers, okay, fine. And in such a way that this becomes is an arithmetic progression. You know, this is a question of that m arithmetic means indirectly, okay. So immediately you can write the common difference here. What's the common difference? You know the formula. That is b minus a upon how many numbers? m numbers. So m plus 1. b minus a means here 30 upon m plus 1. We have used in one of the earlier questions. So d is this. Now what is a1 here? So a1 will be a. a means this one. This is a as per our notation and this is b as per our standard notation. So a plus d. What is a2? a plus 2d. a plus d plus d. That is a plus 2d. What is a3? a plus 2d plus d. That is a plus 3d. And so on. What is nth term? You can write from this. Which is a plus md. In first term here you have 1. Here you have 2. Here you have 3. So in nth term you have this. Right? Therefore we have this. Okay. Now what is given? We are given that. Just read the question given that what is given in the question that the ratio of seventh term that is a7 and m minus one it's okay so a m minus one equals to how much you are given five by nine and what is asked you are asked for the value of small m that's the question fine Okay, now it's straightforward. What's, what is A7? That you can write very easily. That is nothing but A plus here 7D. In A2 you have 2D, in A3 you have 3D. So in 7th term you must have A plus 7D. Okay, and what about M minus 1th term? That is A plus here same. M minus 1D equals to 5 by 9. Okay, fine. Now what we do? We just place the value of D over here. So let's put the value A plus 7 into D. What is D? That is 30 upon M plus 1. 
upon a plus your m minus 1 as it is here 30 upon m plus 1 equals to 5 by 9. Fine. A also, you know, I'm sorry, we could have placed here a value of A. What is A? That is, you know, 1. So you can put here 1 directly. Let me put 1 here. Let me put 1 here. Okay. This is just 1. This is also 1. Putting the value of A. Now just take the cross multiplication and simplify. So you will get the required value of M. I will not do it. You do it. Take M plus 1 of the LCM. M plus 1 of the LCM. It will get cancelled. And simplify so I'll get the required value of M. Question number 17. You are given that a man starts repaying a loan as a first instalment of rupees 100. So here first amount is rupees 100. That's given. If he increases the instalment by rupees 5 every month. So this is first month. Fine. Right? That is here A, that is A1, first month, that is this one, 100. Then in the second month, it will be 100 plus 5. So 105. In third month, it is of course 105 plus 5, which is 110, and so on. The question is what will be amount at the 30th installment, that is at the 30th month. So I asked for this. So what is A30? That is nothing but the a plus now see here a plus n minus 1 into d a you know it is uh, first amount which was 100 plus 29 difference you already given which is 5 every time 5 rupees increases so it will be 100 plus your 145 so it will be just 245 a30 is this so 245 amount would be paid in 30th installment therefore in 30th installment amount will be amount equals to how much rupees 245 given information forms arithmetic progression in the beginning it was 100 then increases 5 every installment so in the next installment that is at the next month 105 then 110 the question is what will be the amount at the 30th installment that is a30 which is just 245 rupees Question number 18, you are given that in a polygon difference between any two consecutive interior angles is 5 degree. So this talks about arithmetic progression there the common difference is 5 degree. The smallest angle is 120 degree. So smallest means the first angle because then if you add the common difference angle would increase. That is A1 which is A which is how much 120 degree. Fine. The question is find the number of sides of a polygon that is you want N. This is a question of arithmetic progression you want the small N. How many terms in short how many interior angles here. So in general if you have a polygon like this here I have just considered you know hexagon. These are the interior angles. The smallest one is for example 120 then this increases by 5 degrees so 120 5 and so on. So what we need to know to get the value of n that you need to see here and that's all in all about the solution. One information is missing in this question in the data which you need to write by your general concept. If you remember here the sum of the interior angles that is this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this for that there is a formula you know triangle is a polygon what's the sum of the interior angles you know 180 degree if you have quadrilateral any quadrilateral polygon with four sides that also you know if you just recall in general uh, let me write here we have this I'll write like that we have sum of 
interior angles of a polygon here uh, we have interior interior angles of a polygon of a polygon with n sides polygon with let me write here n sides equals to this is the formula you know n minus 2 into 180 degree you might have studied earlier in the geometry n minus 2 into 180 degree put n equals to 3 so 3 minus 1 2 180 degree for quadrilateral put n equals to 4 so 4 minus 2 2 2 into 180 that is 360 degree here right for any quadrilateral for square or rhombus or and so on so in general if you have a polygon with n side then this is the formula so what is this indirectly as per our question sum of interior angles of a polygon so therefore you can say that here sn equals to n minus 2 into 180 degree fine now you write the formula for sn what's the formula for sn n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d now everything is known to you the only thing you need to recall that was some of the interior angles of any polygon now what we do we just need to simplify you know a you know d we place there and we'll simplify two you can take on that side if you want let me write right now as it is 2a what is a that is 120 degree so this become 240 degree n minus 1 as it is what is d you are already given this is 5 degree that is nothing but here n minus 2 into 180 degree so here i'll take uh, this inside but before i take this inside what will get here 245 uh, sorry 240 minus here 5 degree so how much uh, you will get from this if i do minus 5 degree this minus this so that is 235 degree into n plus what about this here you will get <coughs> minus 5 degree that i already used plus uh, n square into 5 degree equals to here n minus 2 into this is just nothing but 360 degree so just open the bracket you will get this I have just opened the bracket so 5n square uh, here we have 235 and this is if I take on the other side minus 360 so we'll get the minus 125 n and this is plus 720 equals to 0 everything is in degree here okay now what we do we need to factorize but before we factorize you can divide by 5 here so this is n square minus 125 by 5 that is 25 n plus 144 equals to 0 so here you know now factorization So here, you know, 16 nines are 144. So n square minus 16n minus 9n plus 144 equals to 0. So therefore, factors will be n minus 9 into n minus 16. And therefore, from this, we have either n equals to 9 or 16.